Homework for chemical reactions. So we have the solubility rules provided right here, just in case you need them. And there is an optional space to upload work if you need that too. So let's determine what is the molarity of a solution that is made with, I just covered it, made with 0.2074 grams of calcium hydroxide in a total of 40 milliliters of solution. So whenever you see grams, or most of the times when you see grams in my class, you need to convert it into moles. So we start with what we're given. And we're given this amount of calcium hydroxide. We use the molar mass, which is 74.10, or the formula mass of calcium hydroxide. And just a brief review, if you don't remember how to find that, you go to the periodic table and you look up the, uh, the atomic molar mass for each of these atoms. And then you multiply those atomic masses by the stoichiometric coefficients. Well, the stoichiometric coefficients, what that means is the subscripts. So we have one calcium, we have two oxygens, and we have two hydrogens. So you add all that together, you should get about 74.10. So I do this arithmetic and I get 2.7989 times 10 to the negative 3. And that is moles of my compound here. Now I leave that number in my calculator. Then I'm going to divide those moles by the total solution volume, which we are told is 40 milliliters. But I need to convert that into liters. Remember there are 1,000 milliliters in 1 liter. So I do that arithmetic and I get a molarity of 0 0.06997, capital M molarity, and that is the concentration of calcium hydroxide. When we show concentration in molarity, we can show that by taking the compound whose molarity we're, we're discussing or describing and put it in square brackets. So 0 0.06997 is what would go here. So now the question is, what's the molarity of the calcium ions in the above solution? Well, this is just a simple ratio. You have to notice how many moles of calcium are in calcium hydroxide. Now I'm going to do the calculation. Some of you may be able to see it right off the bat, and that's fantastic, but I'm gonna do the calculation for those who might not see it. So what this concentration says is it's 0 0.06997 moles of calcium hydroxide per one liter. Now I need to change that into moles of calcium ions. When calcium hydroxide hits water, it dissolves into its ions. So in one mole of calcium hydroxide, I will form one mole of calcium ions. And I know that because the subscript on this calcium is one. So the molarity of the calcium ions is the same as the molarity of the solution. So now, how do we find the molarity of the hydroxide ions? Well, using a similar technique to this, I'm going to write out my molarity of calcium hydroxide per one liter, and then I'm going to multiply that by the ratio of how many hydroxide ions there are in one mole, and there are two. There are two moles of hydroxide in one mole of of calcium hydroxide, and I know that because there is a subscript right here showing me that. So when I multiply those two things together, I get 0 0.1399 molar. It says question three because question one was the upload question. So the next question is, here is my chemical, uh, chemical equation. So what's the atom that is oxidized? That's also the reducing agent. What's the change in oxidation state? Well, the atom that is oxidized is going to be the one, it's, it's always going to be a reactant when you're asked what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. It's always a reactant. Reactant is on the left side of the chemical equation or the, or the arrow. So what's the atom that is oxidized? It's the one whose oxidation state is being raised. So here we have magnesium that's going from an oxidation state of zero because anything in its elemental form has an oxidation state of zero. And then on the product side, it's an ion. Now, when it's an ion, it has a plus two charge. So that means the magnesium is being oxidized. And the oxidation state change then is zero to two plus. Now, you can enter this a number of different ways. Remember, I do grade all of my assignments manually. Uh, so as long as I can understand what it is you're getting across, it will be fine. Uh, if you 
leave the charge off, that might be a little bit more confusing. So I would prefer that you put that charge in. So what's the atom being reduced? Well, here, the atom that's being reduced is actually the nickel. If you say what's the oxidizing agent, it should be the whole compound, nickel chloride. But here, the atom that's being reduced is the nickel ion, and it is going from a 2 to a 0. Because on the product side, it's in its elemental form, and that has an oxidation state of 0. Now, how did I know that nickel and magnesium were both plus 2s? Well, I can see in the chemical formula... I can see by the counter ion. The counter ion in both of those compounds is chlorine. Chlorine makes a minus one, and in each of these compounds, there are two of them. That means there were two chlorines to catch two electrons. Therefore, both the nickel and the magnesium were plus two. For the next problem, we're gonna predict the products of this reaction, write the balanced chemical equation. We're gonna use equals for the arrow. Now, something I want to point out, this is not water. This is liquid sulfuric acid. So because the strontium hydroxide is insoluble, but in an acid like this, it is soluble. So we perform the double displacement reaction, and what, we, what we're going to form is water and our salt. Now, this time our salt is going to be SRSO4. So now let's balance this. Our water is going to be a liquid, the SRSO4 is going to be aqueous. So water, let's see, I think we're going to need a two here, two waters. Now, again, I'm going to grade all of these questions manually, so don't trust the server grade. Now we're going to write the molecular total ionic, net ionic equations for this. First thing we need to do is predict the products. So I'm going to do my double displacement reaction. I have my calcium, and this is acetate. Acetate has a negative one charge, and if you don't remember that, that's okay, because it'll tell you in the chemical formula. See how there's one H here? That means that this must be a one minus, because H is going to be a plus one. And this is gonna be aqueous, and we're going to add that to water, which is going to be a liquid. We're going to subscript this and now balance the equation. So I have two, three, I'm going to need, let's see, I need two here. Make sure your compounds make sense before you try to balance. That'll make everything easier. Let's just drop all of this down. So I'm going to need a two here. That means I need a two here and that should be a balanced equation. So that's my molecular equation. The total ionic equation is where everything comes out. And I'm going to leave the aqueous off for the time being. But do make sure in the total ionic equation, you do have ions. Now, when you get to the water part, the water does need to stay together. It is not ions. It's going to be itself water as a liquid. So now what we do is we remove the ions that are on both sides. They're called the spectator ions. And we uh, are left with what is called the net ionic reaction. So to do that, I'm going to drop in my aqueous now that I have it formatted. So here we have the molecular equation, the total ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. And finally, write the properly formatted balanced chemical equation for phosphoric acid. So that's H3PO4, and that's going to be aqueous. Reacting with sodium hydroxide, again aqueous, to form sodium phosphate, which is Na3PO4, and again aqueous, and water, H2O, which is going to be a liquid. So I'm going to put my subscripts in first. And now balance. So on the left side, I have one phosphate. On the right, I have one phosphate. But on the right, I have three sodiums. 
So I need to put a three here. Now I'm gonna count my hydrogens. I have a total of six hydrogens on the reactant side. That means I'm going to need a three in front of water to make six hydrogens. Double check the oxygens outside of phosphate. So that should be my balanced reaction. If you have questions, please let me know.